what do you do when you have reached a saturation point in your business? What's what is saturated? What what? The mm, yeah, I seriously doubt you've reached a saturation point in your business. So break that down for me. That to me sounds like a capacity issue. Mm, explain that, Ashish. Let's dive in. Ashish, a point after which growth is... Yeah, okay, but more specific, Ashish. Where do you think that you're saturated? Ashish says, so in my business, one way to scale is open another outlet, which we did in business and good, but it's important that a trustworthy person can be found in the outlet at all times. Yeah, team. Team is how you scale. This is because our inventory cannot be accurately kept. Oh, that's a big mini wave. We deal in very large quantities, so this adds more complexity and expansion. Kind of. Not really. Like, of course, a, a lot of this is, um, this has all been solved before. Like, your inventory cannot be, tr cannot be tracked? Of course it can. Like, people have dealt with much bigger inventory and logistic issues than you with your one or two or three locations, right? It's definitely, it requires a different level of sophistication, different levels of thinking, uh, you know, different team, maybe investment in some technology for sure, but it, it's definitely possible for sure. You're, you're nowhere near the Amazon scale. Oh my gosh. Not even Amazon scale. Whoa, that took a big bounce onto you. Forget. Yeah, for sure. You're nowhere near Amazon scale, but, um, what was the initial, what was the setup? What was the word? Saturation? Yeah. So you're nowhere near saturation. You might be near like a capacity. You know, your current capacity level for maybe how much you can inventory or your team, but you're nowhere near saturation. So all of these problems are, are easily solvable. They've already been solved, right? Like much bigger businesses have figured this out. And so don't model Amazon. I mean, yes, Drew's right that, you know, you know, in your Amazon size, don't model Amazon, model the people who are a little bit ahead of you, of which there are a lot. We are present online too. Cool. Yeah. Our customers are retailers who want to talk to the boss every time they make a purchase. No, that's not right. That's not true. That's another limiting belief. There's lots of, there's lots, dude, there is lots. There are lots of sales that are made by the same people who you're talking to where they never talk to the CEO. Lots of sales that are made for sure. So that, that is just not true. That might be your current experience but that is definitely not true. So that's a good, that's a good mindset shift. Business in Nepal is very different. It's hard to explain. So deliver that. No, don't blame Nepal again. Like another, this is another important mindset shift. There are big companies in Nepal. There are big companies in Nepal and they deal with this and that are much bigger than you and have figured out their supply chain. And yes, the people buy from people who are not just a CEO, the goods we import take one to six months to arrive. Okay. So again, all of these problems have been solved. There's nothing that you are presenting that has not been solved. And um, that might be true, like the one to six months. Great. Okay. So, you know, we need to solve that problem. The, uh, there are some problems that have to be solved and some problems that don't even exist, right? Like your customers only want to talk to the CEO is not a problem that exists. That's just not true because they buy a lot of stuff from people who are not the CEO, a lot. So that's not a problem. In your mind, it's a problem. So it is a problem. But the, the fix isn't actually anything you have to do except fix your mindset. If something takes you uh, a few months to get in, cool. Now you have to be careful about how you pick your products, right? So obviously, the things that are more seasonal, you either have to plan way in advance or you don't do seasonal products or you make sure that you're only getting stuff that goes out um, that's going to come in a month and you build tighter relationships with your suppliers. But again, all of those things have been solved and this has solved the issue like you're saying it. Okay. So that's great. So you've already solved some of them. Oh, I thought I had my TP. Oh, okay. Now I do. The way we're solving is to make regular orders. So we have containers getting packed in China, containers on the way, and containers in warehouse. Yeah. Hey, and if you can, if you're selling to retailers and you can give them a discount for making 
purchases in advance or bulk orders or repeat orders every six months, every quarter, they're going to buy some more and they get a discount for guarantee, right? You know, it's ways to minimize the risk. But how can we scale more? Uh, so uh, team and, and process and technology, right? So every time it's thinking, okay, well, what do we have? Do we have a marketing problem? Do we have a inventory problem? Do we have a, a, a team problem, right? Like all of those things will continue to, to come, come into play. Opening another outlet is probably not the answer. Um, it is a path to growth. So, are you, so like is the problem not enough locations? Uh, is the problem, like if you're making deals with retailers, why do you need another location? You need to make more deals. Or maybe you have such good relationship with the retailers that you don't need more deals, you need more inventory or more consistent in inventory. Or maybe that's all taken care of and you just don't have enough people to manage everything. Like what's the biggest problem? You solve that problem and you grow. But if you're selling to retailers, I don't know why you need to have an outlet. You're not selling to retailers from your outlet, so that's a direct-to-consumer, which is another way to grow, potentially, if you want. Like, what is, the, the path to growth always will start coming down to, like, what is, you're beyond startup. Like, startup is like, well, what, uh, how do I make any money? What's my first product? How do I, right? All of these kind of early stage problems, right? The startup phase is you're still trying to figure everything out. You need to make any money, try to survive get your first product out the door, that kind of stuff, right? You've already done that. So what's the biggest problem that you're facing? And then all you're doing is solving whatever problem is in front of you. So this quarter, it might be team. Next quarter, it might be inventory. Next quarter, it might be shipping and logistics. Next quarter, it might be marketing. Next quarter, it might be direct-to-consumer, you know? I think our problem is a team and we need more retailers, okay? It could be. I mean, you were you started off talking about all the problems of of logistics and like how long it takes to, for something to come in and tracking the inventory. You know, like those are all logistics operations problems, not not team and marketing problems. But yeah, if you think like the way to look at it is with our current infrastructure, can we bring on fifty percent more clients? Yes, great. It's a, now now we've got a marketing problem. No, you can't. You're you're at like max capacity then great, now, now we've got a capacity problem. So it's always just looking at what's the biggest problem in front of you and solving it because you already know that you've got something that works. Within team, what do you need team to be doing? What is team doing? Because team, team solves, team can solve any problem. Team could solve a marketing problem. Team, team could solve a, a logistics problem. Team can solve, like depending on who you're bringing on, right? Team can solve lots of different kinds of problems. What? We're making a lot of new customers. We only opened our new outlet in February. Maybe we need more patience. Uh, maybe. I mean, it is still, it just turned March. So we're still definitely new into it. But that's part of having a, you know, like a, a, a roadmap for success is like, hey, in month one, this has to work out or we fail. That, that's uh, probably not a great plan. But if you're making a lot of new customers, then then customer growth is not the problem, right? When we just asked what the problem was, is it getting more retailers? So you're making a lot of customers in, w in where? You're getting them on the retail side, you're getting them direct to consumer. But uh, regardless, right? Like what's the biggest problem? Attack that problem. And the more you get into, the more you do it, the more you'll be able to plan a little bit more in advance. So w if you open up a third retail shop, you know, you'll know some of the problems and you'll be able to anticipate them better. So you're not just in constant, like where you're at right now, it's still mostly reaction mode because you haven't built this thing at scale yet. So you're just kind of guessing at what the problems are going to be in advance, right? You don't know how to, the fact that you already thought like your first location would be super successful after one month, just that you don't know how to open up locations yet, right? Which is fine. So you're going to make a lot of mistakes and you're going to make a lot of guesses. So... And that's normal, you know? That's, that's super normal at the beginning when you're scaling. You're not at the beginning of the journey, but you're being the scaling journey. But the next location, you'll have a lot more understanding. And then there'll be new problems. Like now you might need middle layers of management. 
So it's not just you managing everybody, but now you need teams of people. It's a market where only retail owners go to. Uh, okay. It, it feels weird that you'd have a um, outlet and a second outlet for B2B. Right? But sure, if that's how you grow, cool.